What's up, Cinephiles? For this episode, we are going to review a Filipino animated series produced by Netflix, Trece. Before we begin, if you are new to our channel, consider leaving a like and subscribing to us for weekly reviews of movies and TV shows. Based on the Filipino comic book series of the same name by Budget Tan and Kajo Baldissimo, Trece is set in Manila where mythical creatures of Philippine folklore live in hiding amongst humans and our protagonist here, Alexander Trece, voiced by Shay Mitchell in the English version and Liza Soberano in the Filipino version, finds herself going head to head with the criminal underworld comprised of malevolent supernatural beings. Now, I watched the English version of this series and Phil watched the Filipino version. This is actually great because we got to review both of the voice cast for both versions. I haven't read the source comics that was published here in the Philippines, but I was particularly excited for this because the concept is so cool. First off, I am a full-blooded Filipino, so just seeing our culture represented in an animated setting in Netflix is just really awesome, man. The setting is on Manila. You can see the MRT. There's even this subtle joke if you're a Filipino at the very beginning of this series when the MRT kind of stopped. <laughs> there are some really recurring subtle jokes that only Filipinos will understand all throughout this series, so that's awesome. This is kind of a detective story whereas the Filipino supernatural monsters the ones we call Aswang or White Ladies Tikbalang all these creatures is put into this sort of detective action animated series I really had a lot of satisfaction with that and in terms of the animation, I think that they did a good job. After watching this series, I watched After Dark. It's basically an interview of almost everyone uh, mainly involved in the production of this series. So if you want to know more about how this was made, you should watch that. The animation was made in Korea. Some of the production is made in California, some here in the Philippines. So I appreciated the effort because that's not an easy thing to do. I know that a Filipino team can do these kinds of great animation action sequences because I am a fan of One Piece and apparently most of the animation for One Piece is actually made here in the Philippines by a Filipino animator crew. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if the animator crew for this is all Filipino. I have no information regarding that but what was practically guaranteed is that a Filipino was involved in every aspect in the production yes. of this series. That just makes me happy that we have finally stepped up our game and that we can finally sort of play with the big boys in the animation scene. I just want to say my major issue with regards to the Tagalog dub and this is the part where I will probably get a lot of hate from fans but I'm just gonna say it I have to be honest I think Liza Soberano was a miscast uh, the other voice cast in the Filipino dub they were great you can actually see that they are experienced voice actors now I know the economical benefits of casting Liza Soberano because you're gonna get a lot of fans to get to watch this it just shows that Liza Soberano is not really experienced in terms of voice acting her voice acting here is somewhat monotone the only thing that i can speculate about why it's such a monotone voice all throughout that there's almost no emotion to it it's just like that she's reading the script um the thing is liza soberano is not primarily a tagalog speaker i think she grew up in another country so she most of the time speaks in English. So the way that she reads some of these lines, for example, Kevin, we make most of our reviews in English and we just can't get rid of our Filipino accent, right? Um, that's the same thing that happens here for Liza Soberano. Um, she speaks in Tagalog, but you can still see in the diction or in the way she speaks that she's somehow struggling to say some of these Tagalog terms. So that just comes off on screen while you're listening to her and she's the main character here. That really dampens most of my experience here because she has, of course, she has the most script in this series. Man, that's just a bummer. It's just a miscast for me. Well, that's unfortunate to hear. I haven't seen this show in Filipino version, which I intend to after shooting this review. So I'm gonna relay the judgment on your part. I did watch the English version and um, I do appreciate some of the 
actors here, most especially the supporting characters, they have their Filipino accent, which, you know, nailing a Filipino accent is really hard because it really differs depending on what region you come from and sometimes in social class maybe so i do appreciate most of the actors shane mitchell however is using an american accent just because we have a filipino character here who's speaking in an american accent my head automatically makes this backstory that maybe alexander trese did some time abroad <laughs> to study or whatever that's why she adopted that accent so that's just the thing in my head there are some parts for the filipino lines for the spells and incantations that might sound off to some but i appreciate the effort and it didn't take much away from the experience before lingering too much on the voice work i would also focus on the animation because this is the biggest thing having a filipino comic book series adapted is a really big break for our country most especially to be showcased on an international platform so what I do love about the animation here is, yes, it's very competently made. The depiction of Manila here, they do not hold back. Usually, I don't mm. know how foreigners perceive our country, but maybe some, they perceive Philippines as a country full of beaches, the way it's marketed for the tourism ads. But in here, they don't really hold back on the greatness of Manila. And there are some establishments here that they change the names, but if you grew up in Manila, you will know what these establishments are and you know a lot of references be it for the cultural reference and be it for the social political themes in here the themes about police brutality it's not as subtle as you might have wanted it to be yep. but i do appreciate that it really captures the milieu of the filipinos in terms of the mood the things that they were fighting for the importance of family in their culture and most especially in the filipino folklore they modernized this filipino folktale creatures what would they look like if they live in a modern world? What would they be doing? How would they hide in plain sight? So we have here, for example, a Tikbala who's participating in drag racing. So that totally makes sense. All at the same time, staying true to the character and not disrespecting the lore, you know? So that is the very thing that I like. It's both realistic and there's a whimsical nature into it. In terms of police procedural show, this is also a breath of fresh air for me because usually in this kinds of person, procedural shows some of the cases they don't really matter in the long run they don't have a contribution to the overarching mystery but in here every case they all have integral components here i guess the problem for me here is that i just wanted more and six episodes of 30 minutes is just not enough to let the folklore breathe in and to a overall story arc because there's a moment of catharsis here that will happen in sixth episode. Since this is about a story of Alexander Trese tasked with this big, humongous responsibility of being the enforcer of the accords to balance those forces of good and evil. For her, it's all about forging her own path and not losing her identity along the way. So maybe that theme could have been more explored if they had more episodes to work with. I'm sure Kajo and Budget here have lots of ideas in their head. Having a lengthier second season for me with more number of episodes can easily solve that complaint that I have. Uh, let's talk about the characters for a bit. Yeah, with Alexander Trese. Voice acting aside, I thought that she's a very, very cool character actually. She's sort of a badass really. She's really great at fighting. She's really great at investigating. She really knows what to do in most of these situations. And the twins, Crispin and Basilio, those are really fun characters. They are sort of comic reliefs in which they are just there to sort of have fun with every situation. And also Captain Guerrero is also a cool character for me. I agree with you that the political commentary in this is not as smoothly introduced. It's a little bit ham-fisted for me. Now, I want to get into another problem that I had. The major villain is just really, really weak for me. It's just a generic bad guy who wants to destroy everything and the thing that i hated about him the most is he delivered probably one of the longest exposition dumps i've <laughs> ever seen ever that exposition dump during the final act of this series is so long that it probably took half of the last episode i understand that they had to explain all the things that was going on but that was just really clumsy storytelling for me the way that 
that they sort of tried to reveal all of these things all at once by the main villain really just literally narrating everything. The individual cases, especially if you're a Filipino because you're gonna see some of these monsters that you've known ever since you were a child. Uh, Nuno Sapunso, the White Lady of Beleta Drive. We all grew up with these stories. So it's really cool with these individual cases but no particular case really stand out. Probably the Chanak one. I still want to see the second season for this. I hope that Filipinos support this so they can get more financing here. Uh, I agree with you that probably a longer season would be better because they could develop more of these characters or really do more world building. If you are a foreigner watching this, you're probably gonna get confused because they really didn't care to explain much about the mythology of all of these creatures. A longer second season might fix that. I hope that it gets renewed for a second season. I sort of enjoyed this as a Filipino. Uh, I know that that's a bit biased, but I am a fan of animated shows. So seeing something set in Manila where I live and about all the these creatures that I grew up with. That's a satisfying experience for me. My main problem again is just that really weak final villain and the voice acting of Liza Soberano. I'm sorry. Please don't hate on me so much. But I am going to give this series a 3 out of 5 stars. I know you're gonna have a problem with that long exposition dub. That particular scene happens during a fight scene. So if you're going to play that <laughs> on real time, that's really awkward. And that's one of the things that we're trying to avoid. In terms of horror, most of the horror is from the gore and the violence, which the series does not hold back. But at the same time, the gore is not just done for gratuitous purposes. It is necessary element. I do love that the show also kind of tells that evil is not only in the supernatural, sometimes it lies on the agendas of the human beings. I'm actually fine that they do not go to the lengths of explaining the origin of each character because that would be a whole different show. They need to do what's best given that they only have six episodes so they decided to do this character centric. Though I would be pleased if I get some more of the ensemble work here especially for the twins Basilio and Crispin. At best they're two dimensional because they are introduced as these fun characters but they have this dark backstory which I hope the show gets to dig more deep. I had a better experience I guess watching the English version. I noticed on the first few minutes that the motion of the mouth does not really move well with the Filipino version so turns mm. out they really intended this first shot on the English version then subtitled on English then they were translated it to Filipino so when you put on the Filipino audio and the Filipino subtitles they don't really match. If you are a Filipino, this is a must watch. I do love the character of Alexandra here. A strong and well fleshed character all throughout. I'm gonna give this show a 4 out of 5 stars. That explains a lot actually when you said that this was intended to be mainly in English because some of the Tagalog script here let me laugh out loud especially when she shouted Tirahin nyo! Um, I, I was bursting in laughter. Anyway, that's it for our review of Trese. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, let us know what you think in the comment sections down below. Thank you so much guys for watching. Until then, See you on the next one. Bye-bye, guys.